Tree and this is Stitchless TV. Today I'm going to show you how to make the most brilliant designer puffer jacket coat out of two regular puffer jackets. Now what we do is we get one puffer jacket that actually fits us or is of the fit of how you want it to be and then we get another puffer jacket as big as we can and that's all about using it for the material. You also need some ribbing. Now, you know I love ribbing. I've got this jumper and it, it's a bit boring, it doesn't suit me, but it's got this fantastic, lovely ribbed edge on it. So I'm going to use that to put it around the arch of the, the jacket, just to sort of accentuate that curve and finish it off. What happens is, the jacket that fits us is the upper part of the coat and we cut this arch keeping the zip of the jacket coming all the way around in an arch at the back coming all the way around and then that big jacket that I said we use as material we basically just fill the space at the bottom. Try on the jacket that you've bought that actually fits you because you have to try and locate how far up the back your curve is going to be. And then I'm going to gradually bring it all the way down the front. I'm cutting across the pocket here, that doesn't matter. And I want to keep the zip. So I'm going to finish about an inch away from the front here. So I've already measured mine. So I'm going to make a little mark with my pink chalk. Draw a sort of arch shape coming from the centre back coming around, if I lick the chalk it seems to work a bit better. Now remember we're going to cut across this pocket, don't worry about it, and we need to finish about an inch away from all our poppers and zips and stuff like that at the front because we need enough to grab when we stitch it to the bottom half. It's that time we're cutting into a ready-made garment and I feel really nervous but I know it's going to be fantastic. Now when you cut it really make sure that the lining is flat, everything is flat before you cut through. So here we go. Oh, oh I hate doing that. So we're going to go all the way through that pocket, keep going, just keep going until we meet the centre back and then to make sure that it's all symmetrical we do that trick where we just flip it over so we get exactly the same shape on the other side make sure everything is totally flat and then I'm not even going to draw it out I'm just going to start cutting so you end up with something like this to keep the lining and the jacket together we're just going to do a zigzag stay stitch Make sure that you've got your lining in the correct position with the actual puffer jacket and everything all tucked in. When you do your zigzag, make sure it's all together and just work your way around the arch. So I've come to this pocket now. I have to push them all back into their original position. Hold the lining and then just do my zigzag. So as you can see, we've, we've zigzagged the edges and that was just to keep everything all together because it's easier to manage. Now I don't like a messy edge, so I'm just going to trim off all these bits that are sticking out. Kind of looks really cool like this. Now what I usually do is, you see the fullness here? I don't know if you can see on this one. I don't like it sticking out quite that much. So usually what I do is I just kind of gather it in a little bit. Just in this little middle area here, I can use the biggest stitch on my sewing machine and gather it up, or I can just sort of hand pleat it like that, which might be a bit more flattering. I'm just using D on the mini JR. I'm just using straight stitch now, and I'm not gonna gather it because it's hardly anything. So I'm just gonna fold a pleat towards me and stitch. And then I'll probably fold one that's gonna be in the middle. I don't want to overdo it though. And stitch. And squeeze it underneath and then I've got one more little fold to do. Do they look symmetrical? Yeah, kind of. So 
then that that will be enough. So it should look like this. So decide how wide you want your ribbing to be. Now remember, if you come and look here, the ribbing is going to go, it can go all the way around and down or you can just have it so it just stops at the side. It's up to you. You can design it however you want. But for my one, I want it to come all the way around. So mine, I'm going to have it about three and a half inches wide. So my jumper that I don't want anymore, on the hem where it's got the nice finished off edge, I'm going to roughly cut three and a half inch strip. Now if you can, sometimes on these jumpers they just sort of stitch together and then they have a nice raw edge in there. So if you can, try and unpick that little side seam, just on one of the side seams. So look, if you are able to unpick it, you get this nice raw edge, which is really good. But if you're not successful in unpicking, because sometimes they make it so complicated, then you just need to do a little roll hem back and you can hand sew it, which would be neater, or you can just stay stitch it with a straight stitch. We need to know where the middle of our ribbing is, but because we've got the other side of the jumper, the seam there, so we know that that is the middle. We also need to know where the middle of our jacket is and our arch. So in order to do that, I'm just folding it over, I'm matching up the side seams, folding it over, and I'll put a little mark on here so I know where the middle is. Now, you don't know how long your ribbing is going to be, so start on one side of the jacket Start on one side of the jacket and put the middle of your ribbing right sides together with your jacket and start stretching it because you have to stretch this ribbing and go down and just see what the fit is like. Now I can see that mine is that much too long. So rather than taking it away from this lovely raw edge, I'm going to take that much away from where our centre seam is. So I'm going to take off that much, fold it together and just stitch a straight stitch, cut it and zigzag it. So I'm using D, a straight stitch, going backwards and forwards to close off the seam. I'm going to go straight down in the well of one of the ribbed bits, so it's not so obvious. Backwards and then I'm just going to trim back the excess. So using F, I'm going to zigzag it so it doesn't fray. I'm going to sew the ribbing onto the jacket, but we're going to start in the middle and work our way down, and then start in the middle and work our way down on the other side. We're going to use a zigzag stitch, which is F. Our fabric is right sides together, so the, the jacket is right sides up, the ribbing is right sides down, they're together. And doing a zigzag, going, along the edge. Now, I'm matching up the edge of the ribbing with the edge of the jacket and I'm stretching it as I go. That's very important. And as I go along, as if you don't have enough to think about, I'm checking how much stretch I need to do by taking it right to the end and then I'm gonna hold it somewhere so I can see how much stretch and keep sewing. So always keep checking that your ribbing is going to fit and match up with the edge. So you can see, look, the ribbing's like that when it's not stretched. We've got that much slack in the actual jacket, but if I pull it, it fits. Look how professional that looks. So I'm gonna do the same on the other side, but because we're doing the other side, we have to turn it over because we always have the bulk of our fabric to the left when we sew. So coming towards the end, make sure it exactly matches up and carry on doing your zigzag. I'll go backwards and forwards a couple of backwards and forwards a couple of times just to hold it into place. So this is what we've got so far, which is really good. Just like this, you could just stop at this stage. 
but I want a coat. So I'm going to show you how to use the other coat to fill that arch. So this is the other jacket, the one that I bought as big as I could get. I think it's a size 20 maybe. And I got it that size because I just wanted it for the fabric. So it's all about using it for the fabric. But I want to show you something that I've done to the hem, which is a bit cheeky, really, but it, it gives a nice finish afterwards. Now, there was already a hem on the puffer jacket, but what I've done is I've threaded drawstring through just by making a tiny little hole, attaching this to um, a safety pin and just passing it through all the way around. But then I've used these little toggles, which are very good. I don't know if you can see that. And when you squeeze them, you can adjust the length of the um, string and it, it stops it from going through the hole. So that you can easily do. You don't need me to show you how to do that. So for this other jacket that we have just for the material, um, we're just basically gonna cut a rectangle. Decide how long you want your coat to be. So this is the bit that gets attached to the jacket to make it a coat. Now I've decided I want it about 14 inches. So I'm doing 14 and a half, which allows for seam allowances. Now you wouldn't want to cut through one of the poppers. So I'm gonna fall in the middle of it and I definitely want pockets, so I'm keeping the pockets. So I'm gonna be somewhere around here. And so that it's symmetrical, I'm just gonna line it up the other side and lay it on top, making sure everything's all nice and flat. And I'll cut it exactly the same size. So I'll just cut along there so it's the same. Cutting through the zip, which isn't a problem at all. So just the same as we did on the upper jacket, we needed to stay stitch the lining with the fabric together. So I'm going to do exactly the same here on the bottom one. So I'm going to start somewhere in the middle, find the middle, and I'm going to go out using a straight stitch and then the middle and then go out again. Or not using a straight stitch, sorry, using a zigzag stitch just to hold it all together. Uh, here comes a tip. When you're doing this zigzag stay stitch business, don't go right, right on the edge because it gets all clogged up with the fluffy bit. Be just a little bit in, maybe one mil in, and then you can always trim it back afterwards. So we've zigzagged the edges of our bottom section. Now I want to know where the middle is, so I'm gonna fold it over, right sides together. And then when I find the middle, I'm gonna mark it with a bit of chalk. It doesn't really work very well. There we go, so I've marked the middle. Now I'm gonna match up that middle with our actual jacket. Now this is important, okay? So if I can have you down here. So we put the jacket together with the jacket like that and we are sandwiching we are sandwiching the ribbing in there. Okay, I'm gonna show you that again. Yeah, I don't have to say big. Right. Okay. So I'm gonna put right sides of the bottom half with right sides of the actual jacket, sandwiching the ribbing, matching up my center notches, if I can find them, there it is. So that's my notch for the bottom, that's my notch for the top. Now, you've got to have a look now and see what the fit is like. So stretching the upper jacket, see how it fits with the bottom. Now you're gonna find that there'll be a little bit of a difference. So that means I have to gather that much in. What I'm gonna do between this area here, I'm just gonna use a straight stitch. So this is on the bottom part of the jacket, that big rectangle. I'm gonna use a straight stitch and just go straight along there so I can sort of gather it up and ease it. So I'm gonna use D on the mini JL, a large straight stitch, about a centimeter away from the edge. No backwards and forwards. I'm gonna sew between this area here at the back. And then just pulling one thread, not both. That's your thing. Okay, so tell me. So pulling just one of those threads, not both of them, I'm going to ease the fabric 
into that sort of middle bit and then do the same over here matching up our notches stretching this seeing how it fits go all the way down no I need to gather it up a little bit more so you keep doing that until it fits I can really recommend starting at the hem of your jacket put them both together and start working your way along to that center back bit because if it's not fitting you can then just sort of ease it as you go right sides together I'm at the hem line them up I'm going to do a small seam allowance a little you know like a small centimeter I suppose straight stitch small seam allowance I've gone back with some forwards straight stitch take it easy over the zip you might need to turn the wheel on the side I just would because you don't want to break your needle until you're in the clear so it's a bit stiff there that's all right now still just turning the, the wheel because it's a bit thick and then just keep going so as you go along if you find that it's not fitting then just stop so if you have a look my my notch isn't quite lining up although it's not that far off so I want I'm stopping look how far away I'm stopping from my notch and then what I'm going to do I'm going to do the other side and bring it to the same distance away and then when I see how much excess I've got then I know how much I can sort of ease it into fit so I've stopped the same distance away from the edge as I did on the other side because I've got all this excess that I need to fit in. So what you do now is, you get your notch, you line up your notch with the notch on the jacket and you just, you carry on sewing. But as you go along, you can sort of start pleating bits in or easing it in because none of this is going to show because it falls underneath the line of the ribbing you'll see in a minute you'll see in a so I'm just sort of pleating up little bits and squashing it in until both of my notches my center notches match up now what I would say is it might get a bit thick what I would say is it might start to get a bit thick so you're gonna to have to start using that wheel on the side of your machine for the thick bits I nearly not quite nearly broke my needle all the while as you're sewing, always keep checking underneath to make sure you haven't scrunched up some of that lining and caught the lining. And then when you meet up with the stitching on the other side, just go backwards and forwards to close off that seam. Ready? So you end up with something like this. Can you believe it? So that's two 14 pound puffer jackets 28 pounds this has cost me in my old jumper and I've ended up with something that I think is maybe a little bit designer now later I am going to add the ends of these sleeves onto the ends of the puffer jacket sleeves so I end up with ribbed cuffs thank you so much for watching stitchless TV don't forget to leave a comment. I love it when you leave a comment. And if you want to see more versions of this coat, then take a look at my Facebook page, Stitchless TV Sewing Channel or Stitchless Tree. Thanks so much for watching. See you again soon. Bye. Bye.